hello guys welcome back to my youtube channel simulation by hm in this video we are going to build a thermal equivalent circuit model for supercapacitor using matlab simulink what i'm going to do is i'm going to build the model which is already developed by this paper here and the model kinds of divides into two regions the sounding and the supercapacitor and the important thing to build this model is to realize how many elements we need now the in the sounding region we have ta which represents the sounding temperature or convection which represents the natural convection occurring at the surface of the supercapacitor this p here represents the heat generation in the supercapacitor rth represents the internal resistance or the uh, you can say the opposition offered by the supercapacitor body to the heat flow and cth represents the thermal capacitance or we can also name it as thermal mass here now this uh, is simply the reference which uh, in case of temperature would be the absolute zero here now this t is not exactly a uh, element here it is simply the temperature variation is simply you can say it's a sensor that we place at at the midway between r convection and rth or simply the temperature of the surface of supercapacitor and the properties that we need or the values that we need from the paper are this these here and it's a 1500 farad supercapacitor so we have both the manufacturer values as well as the measured values and other than that we need the values for different elements for example ta the ambient temperature r convection rth and cth and the final results that we are hoping to get should be something like this so that's how the temperature should vary at the surface so let's jump right into the modeling part so open your matlab in your MATLAB, write Simulink, press enter and this Simulink start page will appear. Now create a blank model. Now on the top left, you can see this library browser. We need to open this and search for Simscape here, this one. And under the foundation library, go to the thermal this one and in the thermal elements we will see like the elements that we need for example thermal resistance is one element that we need and simply right click this one and then drag it and you will get a copy of this one something like this and then we need thermal mass as well so left click and drag now connect these two together now this will be our resistance for convection and this will be our internal or the resistance for that represents the capacitor resistance and this thermal mass would be the thermal mass for the capacitance and simply just connect this one other than that we need the heat source here right so we can go to the thermal sources and drag this one which is the heat flow rate which will be our source heat source simply left click this corner and attach it here like this now you see we have one end here and in the model we notice that this one was attached to the reference so go back to the thermal elements and take this thermal reference drag it here and simply connect these two together and that should be our heat source now other than that we need the temperature which would represent the ambient or the sounding temperature for that go to the thermal sources here and drag this temperature source in here and we can simply connect this with this here so this represents our model here but we need to add few more things for example we need to measure the temperature between the this resistance and this resistance we can go to the thermal sensor here and we can drag this temperature sensor and simply drag this with your left mouse and you can simply connect it here so this would be our 
uh, sensor which will measure the temperature variation between these two resistances or at the surface of the supercapacitor and other than that we also need to attach this to the reference as well so we can simply right right click this one drag it and we will get a copy here so now left click and drag it to this point to connect it here and we need to attach now the thing is since we are measuring it so we need to add some kind of uh, maybe graph measuring device or element here so for that go to the commonly used blocks here in simulink and you will see an element named scope something this one and drag it here and wait yeah here so now notice that if i pick this here it doesn't get connected here right so what we need here we need to add one more element here which will be the utilities this one go back to the thermal and use this utilities here and drag this ps simulink converter this basically converts our signal whichever signal this is like thermal signal into something more mathematical in nature and simply connect this with this end and this should go here so now we can actually measure how the signal would vary but since we haven't run the simulation yet so we don't have that now that should do yeah that completes our model now there is something i would like to point out now notice that in here this looks like closed circuit but when we build the model in the simulink we need these references are kind of open-ended so we can in other words we can put this reference or ground node simply as an opponent here and opponent here as well that's what i'm doing in the simulink now go back here yeah this one so it's exactly the same the only difference is that this reference node are attached differently but if we were to draw it something like this one we'll get the same results so that should do for the model now next thing we need is to put all the values of different elements for example this is the temperature at the outer surface and right now it's 293.15 and i'm going to add 290.5 which is the value you can see that the author has used in his article press ok and this r convection given by the author is 3.5 press ok and for the internal resistance it is 4.2 press ok now the thermal mass now this one is as you can see the unit here is different in the uh, in the paper it's joule per kelvin only but there is no mass here so the mass of the supercapacitor that i found online is 0.280 basically 280 grams so since the units are in kg so that would be 0.280 and as for the specific heat it was around 450 press ok and then we need to set the heat input that we need to give now this would be i square r which is a very common notation for irreversible heating and i in in this case it was 75 amperes and it would be square so we can simply multiply 75 with 75 that would be i square and then multiply by r now internal resistance that was 0.3044 5 which is basically 45 milli ohms so press ok now and that should set up our model and the next thing is the time now i'm going to probably in the model it is 8000 seconds so i'm going to set 8000 and just now one last thing that you need to do is to go to the utilities here like open the library browser into the simscape and here in utilities also drag this solver configuration here now this is essential here because 
when you deal with any simscape uh, elements this is kind of an essential or mandatory thing without this your simulation won't run so you need to copy this into the uh, window here so simply connect it anywhere it doesn't matter where just connect it anywhere it's just essential without it you won't be able to complete your simulation so it's a must so simply just connect it anywhere and then press run button here and now you can open this scope by double clicking it and as you can see this is how the temperature varies at the surface of the supercapacitor which is almost same as the one given in the paper so that concludes this model here so that's how the temperature will vary and it's almost same as the author's results that's it for today's video thank you so much for watching this video